Right guys, um, I noticed in the last week that a lot of people have been having trouble completing the conventions worksheet, um, just having a lot of general th conventions missing or not being able to pull all the correct dimensions from the question here and then transferring them onto our actual orthogonal views. So to start with, I've just outlined the general shape of our object, so hopefully you're all able to get up to this stage. And I've just started the outline of the side view. So first thing I'm going to do is add our holes. So I've already added the center points of those there. So, so they are threaded holes, so we need to have our threaded convention lines on those so do those now and the first thing we need to add to these is center lines so this is something that a lot of people are forgetting to put in and while we're doing these we can also add center lines on the curves at radius 15 so have them crossing this outside line to indicate that that's also a center line for those for these radiuses. Okay, our next step is going to be looking at this part here of our drawing, so getting this bit of webbing drawn up on our section side view. So, firstly, we've got this dimension 45 here which we'll need to use, and this dimension here, which is the width 15 here. So I'm going to start on my side view. So from the bottom, we'll draw up 45, so I'll just mark that out. So there's my 45 point. Draw that as a thick line there, and then it's got a line coming up perpendicular and it intersects the webbing and so there's that. You'll notice we've got the 7-2 gradient so I can mark that in as well so if I count up 7 squares so 1 so 2, 4, 6, 7 come up 2 and then connect that and then I can continue that gradient line further so we get that we have this intersection point here so I'll just fix that up and also worth noting is that we have our three millimeter rounds on all these edges so and that includes this back edge here so we'll fix that up while we're at it so we end up actually getting curve in here coming down hitting there and that's actually a curved edge along there so so we put those three mil curves in now we're going to move back across to our front view and add that webbing there so we have our center, so we can come up, we know it's going to end along this line here. It was 15 millimeters wide, so we go about 7.5 either side, and draw straight up to that 45 millimeter high line there, and then that comes off to the side, So and it's got a curve, so we'll add that radius like that. The next part we want to look at is our slot and in particular these edges coming up here and a lot of people are having trouble in um, getting this dimension coming down the front on their side view so where this edge intersects with this edge over here. So we have this 40 dimension here which means we've got 20 mil on either side of our center line for these edges coming up. So we can draw those. So from here, 
come across 10, 20. We can draw from there. It's a curved. And we come up and we draw till that intersects with our edge. And because there's a slight, because it's all filleted and radiused, we put a slight radius on where it hits the edge there. So we just do the other side. Now we can go back to our side view. So we've got our 7-2 line coming up here and we can take this point and move it across onto our side view and it, that will be the point where this slope hits our side surface, the lower side surface here. So that's what I've marked here. And we know that that is going to come up and hit this 7-2 slope perpendicular. So we can get something that's roughly like that. Then it comes in and it's got a slight curve to it in the end. And then we can finish off. So you can see that we're form starting to really form the side view here. Now we want to draw our slot that has this radius in it. So we know that we've got this 20 millimeter dimension here from this corner down to the bottom of our radius and this depth 35 which is the how far down that slot penetrates. So we draw about so roughly 20 mil is about here and then we come down 35 so that will be roughly so that's roughly 35 millimeters there um, if I was using a ruler I could measure that out properly so make those lines solid so there's just a few things left to add to our side view now so it's worth noticing that we are there's a section side view so we can add center lines to our front view or symmetry lines more correctly and We'll label that section A. So we'll label that AA there. So this over here will be section AA. Now it's because we're cutting through this front view like this that, and we've got this thin webbing, so we don't section that because it's a webbing, we don't section that in our side view. So we can see this L shape here, because if we sectioned it, these this L would disappear and would have section hatching going through there, and you would no longer be able to see the shape of that webbing. So we now just need to add some holes to our side view. So they're on these center lines, which we need to add. And when we've got symmetry on either side of our symmetry line so we've got these two holes we cannot even though our section doesn't go through one of those holes we can still represent one of those these holes in our section side view to show that they do in fact go right the way through the object okay so we can now finish off our side view just by adding hatching uh, to note with this is how we do our hatching I've seen quite a few different ways people came up of doing this. I saw some people just shading like this as hatching, which is not right. And some people doing really, really close hatching. Some stuff just coming across like this, which is not what we want. So for a part this side would hatch with the spacing of you know between five and ten millimeters on a spacing of our hatch lines and we make sure it's nice and neat so that is our completed side view now all that's left 
is to do an auxiliary view and complete our front view. So, first thing, we can take this point here off our side view, run that across, and that's going to give these edges that are on here. And if we go back to our question page, see that our slot width, it, the width here is 15 millimeters, so we can put that in. So. Make square at that edge, square there, and to know how deep to bring these lines I've started here, we transfer this point here across, that comes to about there, and then we can just meet that up, connect that like so, and we've got curved edges here, so we need to show those on these edges here. So something like that. So we have those curves and we see a, because of the way we're looking front on, we see some of this arc. So it's a truncated radius and we can pull this point over here, cross, and place that about there. Uh, we also need to show the part of the slot we'll see here, so we can take this point from here, move that across, so we get something like that. So that's our completed front view. Now all that's left for us to do is to draw our auxiliary view. So if I bring some of these across, some of these points here across, um, this one, like that. And we have the width coming across here, which is equal to this width here on the so I'm just going to rough that out. With a ruler you would measure this. So that's about right. And then that there. So should also note we have, because we do have a curve here, we put a line across there to indicate that, to show that there is a change in surfaces there. And we can put that same line just across here. Now the main point of this auxiliary view is to show our uh, to show the radius properly. So I'm just going to put in a center line for that and the bottom of that's there. Using a ruler we can get the um, points properly for this slot. Then we can draw our slot like that. Just need to add the center point of that. There's our center line going through there. And we don't need to draw the rest of what we'd see from this projected view, and we can just cut it off and use just like a line like that to show that it's been cut off and you don't see the rest of all this behind it. So that's a, our completed drawing, and we have all the required conventions. We have center lines through our holes. We have our section arrows. We've labeled our section. We've shown our threads on our holes. We have sectioning. You can see our webbing here. We have symmetry lines. So if you're having trouble, I hope this video has helped.